Hey y'all, I'm Lindsey Thomas with the National Deer Association, and I wanna to talk to you about four factors that have a significant and consistent influence on deer movement, especially buck movement. And when I say that they have a significant impact, it's because we know from repeated scientific research that these factors are influential. When you go to the rifle range to shoot your rifle, you don't take one shot and decide you know where your rifle is zeroed, right? You put several shots on paper and look for a group. Science works the same way. And when multiple scientific studies in different regions have found similar answers to the same question, that's a good group. And we feel confident in those results. So when I talk about four factors that have a significant influence on deer movement, all four of these have been confirmed by repeated scientific testing in various regions and over the years. So let's look at these four factors knowing that we have high confidence based on science that these can be used to predict deer movement and hunt them more effectively. The first one is deer food. Deer need food every single day of the year. Research has shown that a deer needs about six to eight percent of its body weight in forage every day for maintenance and survival. If you're talking about a 150 pound deer, that's over 10 pounds of forage a day that deer needs. So every day of the year, food is a significant factor in deer movement. Now look at this food plot behind me. We've got cereal grains, oats, and wheat coming up real quick. We just planted this fall food plot recently. That's good deer food, but it may not be good deer food today. It always depends what else is out there and available. So this is where your scouting comes in. For example, this food plot looks attractive and that is deer food, but when acorns are falling in the woods, deer will be where the acorns are, particularly white oak acorns. They have a strong uh, attraction for deer, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about corn or protein feed, a soybean patch, a fall food plot like this one, acorns are probably going to be where the deer are. So on any given day, do your scouting, identify the deer food that's out there, but importantly, determine which deer food is the most attractive today. It changes throughout the seasons and throughout the course of a hunting season. For example, a brassica food plot may not be very attractive early season when acorns and other food are available, but later on in the hunting, in the hunting season in the fall, they become more attractive. There's lots of examples out that, like that out there. Use your scouting to determine what's the best food out there today. The second factor that has a significant influence on deer movement is time of day. Study after study in all regions has found that deer movement peaks twice every 24 hour period once around dawn and again around dusk. So for the first hour or two of daylight in the morning and the last hour or two of daylight in the afternoon is your best opportunity to hunt deer. That's not to say they don't move at night or move during the middle of the day. They do, they just don't move as much during those two periods as they do around dawn and dusk. A lot of people think that this changes wildly with different factors, but it doesn't. Repeated scientific testing has found that in all seasons, in all weathers, deer movement peaks around dawn and dusk. Now, one study found that a full moon caused deer to move a little bit longer into the morning hours and start moving a little bit earlier in the afternoon. But the difference was so subtle, you almost wouldn't notice it as a deer hunter. There's no drastic effect on this uh, movement cycle by a full moon like some people believe. So just keep that in mind. Repeated scientific testing has found that the peak of deer movement will be dawn and dusk. You can hunt all day, and, and it's not to say you won't see deer during the middle of the day. You can. You can see deer moving during the middle of the day, particularly during the rut when bucks are moving a lot. But your odds are always better to see deer moving around dawn and dusk. The third factor that has a significant influence on deer movement, particularly buck movement, is the rut, as you probably guessed. Science has found that bucks move the least and cover the smallest percentage of their home range in summer and that rate of movement begins to increase through the pre-rut and peaks during the peak of the rut and the peak of breeding, whenever that is where you hunt. During the rut, bucks are covering a greatest percentage of their home range and traveling more on a daily basis than any other time of year. It's the best time of year to be out there hunting bucks because they move. Science has not found any factors that reduce their movement during the rut. Not the weather, not the moon phase, this is just the time of year when bucks are moving most. So use that to your advantage. If it's the peak of the rut where you hunt, be in the woods if you can go. This is when bucks move. It's when daylight movement of bucks is greatest as well. The timing of the rut varies across the country. In some places it's early, in some places it's late, but for most of us across most of America, 
the peak of the rut is going to be early to mid-November. So during the month of November, if you can get in the woods, get out there. It is your best chance to see bucks on their feet. The fourth and final factor that has a significant influence on deer movement and buck movement is one that can actually defeat your advantages with all the other three if you don't take it into consideration. And that's hunting pressure. Your own hunting pressure and the pressure of other hunters in the area. Hunting pressure can remove your advantages when it comes to your food source scouting and playing with the timing of the rut and the time of day. So how does this work? Science has found using GPS collared bucks on areas where they were actively being hunted and where hunting patterns and hunter activity were known that bucks immediately reacted to hunting pressure and began to skirt areas that were receiving pressure. For example, they found that a deer stand like this one getting hunted one time, bucks in the vicinity immediately began skirting around that site and movement patterns in the area didn't return to normal for two to four days after the last time that site had been hunted. So don't be predictable by deer. D don't be patternable yourself. If you hunt the same stand site over and over, if you use the same routes to those stands again and again, deer know where you are, they know where you're not, and they will move accordingly. So use that knowledge to your advantage. Think about areas you're not hunting. Break out the map and look for the areas you've overhunted. Look for the sites you haven't checked out. And start hunting areas you've never hunted before. And rotate your pressure from stand to stand as much as you can. Don't be predictable. This, again, is one of the factors that will defeat all your other advantages when it comes to your scouting and reading the rut. So don't forget hunting pressure. Think about your pressure and the pressure of others and use that to your advantage. Look for areas deer are using simply because you are not there. So those are the four factors that are most important to deer movement. Food, time of day, the phase of the rut, and hunting pressure. Use those to your advantage this fall. If you'd like to support the National Deer Association and our nonprofit mission to ensure the future of wild deer, wildlife habitat, and our hunting heritage, I hope you'll go to our website, deerassociation.com, and join today. Thank you very much.